Special thank you to Seed and Stone Cidery and Lucky Buzz Meadery for sponsoring the show today. Uh, they help to make this show possible and supply us with the, the occasional beverage when we're out there. They've got 10 uh, taps full of meads and ciders made right there in house. They've also got all sorts of awesome events going on, including an open mic. Uh, almost every single Thursday where you can come out and show your musical talent. So all you songwriters out there, uh, stop out and grab a cider or a mead and tell them that the songwriters couch and the Patrick Joan band sent you. Again, Seen and Stolen Cidery right here in Rochester, New York. Go out and visit them and let them know we sent you. Thanks, guys. All right, everyone, welcome to the Songwriter's Couch. I'm Hatless Pat, uh, and this is episode number 15 uh, of the Songwriter's Couch. And on today's show, we've got Mr. Marty Aloko. I should have... Alaco. There yeah, we go. There you go. <laughs> I know I should have I should have verified the uh, pronunciation before we got started here. Yeah. Um, but formerly my my daughter's uh, guitar teacher, amongst other things, that I'll let you introduce yourself uh, uh, and give some background on what you do, what you used to do, and what you have been doing, and what you're going to be doing in the future. <laughs> um, but uh, to, b- before we begin, I want to thank our sponsors, Seed and Stone, of course, uh, for sponsoring the show and making this happen. Uh, before we get started, to go down there, click on the uh, click on the like subscribe whatever buttons bells and things that you you know you click like around there or there wherever it would be there here um and uh, subscribe tell your friends comment that really helps the algorithms um because they hate it when you don't pay for advertising on their platform so uh i want to welcome you uh marty to the show i appreciate you coming on uh and why don't you tell the people out there what uh, what it is you're doing and what what uh you know where they can find some stuff from you oh gee thanks um, what am I doing? <clears throat> what have I done? <laughs> this is a long, this is a long, you want the short version? No, no, no I want the super long, this is a long form oh, podcast. I was, so. I was born in 96. Oh man, we're starting all the way back there already. And then, <laughs> <laughs> everything's a blur until about 2015. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> gotcha. What, wait, what year were you born? 96. Oh man, I feel old. My brother, Pat, was born. Good year though. Well, you were you born for wines too? Good year for wines, ninety six. Yeah, eighty. Eighty. Ooh, you're yeah. old. Yeah, and I'm on the cusp. I'm like right in between the millennial and and Gen X. Yeah, you're like I forget what they call they call that something. But so anyway, millennial so, X. Oh yeah. So what am I talking about? <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. So what do you, what do you do? So you're a, a uh, musician, obviously. I'm a musician, sort. musician slash uh, audio engineer slash I guess producer of sorts. Mm. Slash singer, songwriter, slash session musician, slash what else do I do? I don't know. Pretty much everything. A sex symbol. Yeah. Icon <clears throat> of a generation. I don't know about a generation, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe like a year. <laughs> then the 1996 people that were born in 1996. Yeah. Um. So what? You got a couple of couple of bands, or you got uh one band, main, one main main band that oh, I know God. of at least that uh, you're in. Yeah, I'm in. I mean, I think technically, I'm involved in one way or another in like f- four to five different projects. Mm. Um. So, should I name them all? Sure. Yeah. Sure. So. Um, the longest one I've been, I've been involved with, that's, uh, sentence is, uh, Letters from New York. <clears throat> uh, I, I, uh, co-founded that band in, I don't know, 2020, I think. Hmm. Uh, Chuck's Nexus, which is new to me, but the second longest. Um. All original bands, both these guys. Both, those are original, yep. Um, I... I think shortly before or shortly after joining Checks and Xs, I released a solo album where I, re- I played all the instruments and produced the whole thing. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I also produced all the letters stuff. Oh, did you? So, yeah. I might have to hit you up on some of that stuff. Do you do, like, for hire uh, audio production? Stuff? Okay. Yeah, I actually... So, I just quit my job, my full-time job. I had a, right. I was working construction, Good uh, man. carrying blocks and doing yeah. mortar and block you, buildings and basements and stuff. How are your fingers... Uh, 
doing that um as a guitar player. they were amazing <laughs> actually like oh really yeah the muscles were terrible i would get so uh. stiff but uh, but the calluses, the calluses and stuff you'd get? I would never lose them because I would, if I wasn't playing guitar, if I didn't play every day, it was fine because I would be touching rough things so the calluses would huh. maintain themselves. Oh, and good. now that I'm not doing that, I go to play after four days and I'm like, oh my yeah, God, yeah. Why am I losing it? <laughs> <clears throat> That's the eternal struggle of the guitar player, right? Like, so I, every time I change my strings, especially if I haven't played in a while, I'm like, oh, I should change my strings before this next gig that's coming up. And let's say I haven't played in like three days, which is unusual mm -hmm. to not play at all. Um, but I, when I lose them, I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe how like how much Dude. these, uh, yeah. you know, the strings feel like the action is freaking six inches off. The, yeah, it's terrible. Or <laughs> like if you switch a guitar, if you switch guitars, like I just started playing an SG recently mm. and I'd never touched one before. And uh, yeah, it was just like the string tension is just slightly different than I'm used to. And I, I would play and as soon as I would, I would bend and I would go, oh my God, I'm yeah. not used to that. Are SGs, do they, they have higher actions in general or is it just like the... No, tension? it's not an action thing that can be adjusted. It's more just like, I think I think what it is is the, the, the scale length total overall oh. is, is slightly longer than a Les Paul, which I normally play. Right. So the strings are under just like slightly more tension, which oh. I'm not used to because I... Yeah, like, I like my Les Paul. It's all I play. Yeah. So what kind of Les Paul you got? It's a studio. Oh. And it's yeah. it. I think it's wine red. Huh. But uh, it's got a bunch of custom stuff. I I pulled out one of the pots. I replaced one of the pots. I rewired it and I put a telly knob, a big oh, stupid nice. shiny telly you know, knob on it. It's it's funny. So I have um I have a complaint <clears> about <throat> one of my guitars. And and uh, if anyone wants to send us free guitars here, you play he plays uh, Les Pauls and I'm playing. A Fender Acoustasonic, but but one of them I have a gripe a little bit with Fender because one um, the way that those have you ever played a, a Acoustasonic? I have one back. No, I never have. There, maybe somewhere, or maybe it's still upstairs. No, I see it. It's right there. Is it okay? Um, but the strings, if you break a string, you know the little metal knobs at the end of it. Mm -hmm. uh, where those fall into is the main electrical compartment where every all the electronics are oh, held. Oh, get out of here! But they didn't. Um, they didn't insulate oh, no. the wires in there. So the first one I had, this is my second Acoustasonic. Not, a, not an inexpensive guitar, by the yeah, way. Yeah, uh, Like the, the one that I got. Um, but as soon as I broke a string, I was we were in this rehearsal studio mm -hmm. here, and we were practicing. And all of a sudden, I break a string. I'm like, oh, shit. But I keep going, and then I see smoke coming out, <laughs> and I smell it, and then the guitar just stops playing. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Um, and as it turns out, it shorted out the whole Dude. the whole board because the <laughs> thing fell in there. Oh. But then, secondly, there's a second thing though, because where the volume knob is is right where you you tend to strum. Mm -hmm. And so I constantly like during shows, especially if I'm really getting into it, yeah. I'll hit the volume knob and it'll just go <laughs> go to zero all of a sudden out of nowhere, which is crazy. But um, so what what made you replace it? Because you mentioned the the Fender knob. You replaced it with a telly knob. What what made you do that? It was just like you don't like the those little glass. So cubes. I wanted something that felt different because mm -hmm. I I liked I I uh, I'm a big volume manipulator while I'm while playing, you're playing. <clears throat> and I like that's what I use for like if I want to go to a clean tone. Mm. I don't really I have a pedal board, but I don't I pretty much set my amp to one like slightly overdriven tone, and then I either push it with a pedal or I roll down my volume. <clears throat> And so I wanted something that I could feel felt different than the Gibson knobs. Yeah. That stupid smooth. And then you can't like, I don't know. I can never tell. Sometimes it's like, okay, is it moving or am I sweating so much that I'm sliding? Yeah. <laughs> That's true. So, yeah. Cause they have those like epoxy, the clear epoxy kind of knob. Yeah. Them, right. Or, or they glass or whatever. I don't know what it is. Um, but it's, but, yes. If, unless you're looking at it, you're like, is it moving? Like yeah. I'm expecting it to. So I just, I switched the knob out for a big metal grippy telly yeah, knob it's got all the like the divots in it or whatever <clears throat> yeah so so just for the people at home you're primarily a guitar player right is that how you how you started out that was my yeah so that was my first thing i ever touched was a guitar and then uh that's my that's been my focus for i don't know since i was 12 huh. but what, then, what got you into guitar like was it something like your family had had instruments in the <clears throat> um in the house or is just like you wanted to uh, actually, funny enough, as much as I hated school, it was school. Oh, really? Were, yeah, I went, so I went to, I was at a private Catholic school, huh. and I hated my life. <laughs> I, went, so, I went to private Catholic schools, too. It Mario. was horrible. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but All boys, or was it, was it like, no? No, it was mixed, dude, right. whatever. Yeah. Um, um, but, uh, 
there was a a guitar cl- there was like a music class or whatever and one of the units was guitar hmm. and so i picked up a guitar and was like oh this is interesting and they were like play these chords and i i was like this is boring this is school yeah and then so i went home and um ignored everything i learned in school i went home and i my my dad had <laughs> A guitar that was gigantic, and the strings were about an inch from the fretboard. Yeah, you know. But uh, I found a quarter because I didn't have a pick, and I learned. Um... <laughs> oh, Green Day of all things. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that that uh, one of the one of the first songs that I I think Nirvana and then Green Day because because while their their songs are complex. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> But they're simple enough where you can learn them. Like you can learn a song, at least a few of them anyway. That that you know when you first start playing, it's like oh I can play a song, and it's a cool song. It's yeah. not like uh, Mary had a little lamb or whatever they you know they're probably teaching in school, right? Yeah, they're like it's 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 like th- it's three chords, and you can <laughs> learn it in a day when you've never touched a guitar before. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like. Hell yeah! So I, was your dad a guitar player too, or was fuck, it no? No, he just had the guitar no. laying around. He just had it. It was from when he was like I don't know. It was probably from the '60s or something or '70s. Um, hmm. My brother did play guitar. Older, um, or younger? Older. Older. Um, right. I'm the youngest of five. Oh wow! So my sister played violin. Everybody's sort of musical. My I have two sisters and two brothers. One of my sisters played violin. My other sister um, played guitar and sang for a long time she still can but she doesn't yeah uh my older brother oldest brother played guitar um and he's actually like he got me into learning how to play with people after a while huh it was like were you did you ever have a band with any of your siblings at all uh or? actually yeah uh me and my, so this is one of the projects that i'm involved in that i forget about because i'm not <laughs> doing it every day um me and my not oldest brother have a it's like a metal thing going on um nice and uh, so it's like electronic metal, and then I track all the guitars. He tracks like this synth beat, and then he screams huh. and whatever. And uh, we call it bubblegum. All right. And uh, I have to check out. Do you have anything like released out there? That... I don't even know. There was one, and I don't. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't remember. You have to just you have to look it up. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. I'll he take did, a look. He he did all that stuff. I just played the guitars and sent him the tracks. I don't know if he put anything out or not. Huh. Um, <clears throat> so that it's interesting though, cause you went from, for the most part, when I talk to people that get into music, it's usually, okay, they have some sort of family, uh, like their, their parents were involved in, obviously your brother, your mm-hmm. older brother was playing or whatever. Um, I'd be interested to see like what, what made him, do you know what got him into? No. Into um, a, the only thing that I know about him. How much older kind of, is he than you? 15 years. Okay, so he uh, see. I think like the '90s, the yeah. early '90s, like <clears throat> early '80s, the guitar mm-hmm. was like. I mean, you had Eddie Van Halen, you had all those like shredding hair metal bands back then. You know, like guitar playing yeah. was like the I mean, thing. He didn't get into any of that though, which is funny. Like he played. Oh God, I don't even know the artist. He played like Tom Petty and like Van Morrison and huh. like uh, yeah, like. Uh, like Bob Dylan, not Bob Dylan, but like that kind of genre where yeah, it's just so like more f- like a singer song singer writer songwriter type of thing. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and he wasn't a big solo guy either. He just would play, it. but he played banjo too. Um, huh. So I actually have his banjo in my room. That was something that I learned along the way. The last uh, thirteen, fourteen. How's, how's that going? Years. Banjo? banjo yeah. <laughs> I haven't touched it in three years. <laughs> I want to get one too for the house, but I know I'm going to be like, I'm going to get it and it's just going to sit there. Yep. And I'm going to have to, because I'm going to have to learn it first. I'm going to have to be like, sit it's, down and learn. I'm going to. It's not, I mean, it depends on how you learn. I learned, I learned claw hammer style. Mm. So it's like, that was really easy because your hand just bounces and I was already familiar with acoustic. Yeah. Um, If you want to do like the crazy finger picky stuff, that's really hard. Yeah. But if you want to grow your nails out and stuff. And, yeah, I'm not doing yeah. any of that shit. <laughs> no way, dude. Like all those classical guitar players with the coke nail, you know what I mean? That's got, yeah. got they got that stuff going on. So but it's interesting that you went like you went to school and that's what got you into kinda into guitar in the mm-hmm. first place. Did you stay with the school guitar playing? Like was it a rock band or what what kind of like like in the, it's strange that there's a like in the classroom. Yeah, like it was the, literally guitar like guitar is an unusual. It was just like instrument, uh, honestly to I, have. I think they just they just needed to fill time, so they did like a month mm. of like learn these chords. Put this they put this paper in front of you, and it had the chord charts, you know, with G, C, D, and E minor. Yeah, 
and they would go play these chords and strum them and everybody would do it and they would do whatever and they'd do the awkward thing with their thumb <laughs> that I, I hate when new new beginners do that i'm always like you're gonna what, learn what is it the where you have to where they yeah where they do this <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just sounds like a muted mess. Yeah. And, uh, you know, no no judgment. Yeah. Well, that's one of the first things but. you learn to, like, I think, well, not first things, but once you actually start feeling comfortable with a guitar is to move your, the way that this arm mm -hmm. moves, like to move your wrist instead of your entire arm. Because I feel like yeah. at first people think, okay, you're going to. I never had a problem with that. I'm weird. I, like, I always freak out on people because I watch that happen where they do, they, you know, they yeah. move the robot arm. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, stop. But, like, I can't judge because, it. I mean, I don't know. When I started, it just it was, it was it just came, it kind of came naturally to me. Yeah. So I can't really, and then, I don't want to be well, rude the to thing that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I mean, it, sometimes it can get, like, if you're trying to, t you know, train someone, it's like, oh, my God, I like it. But you, then you recall, yeah, I had trouble with this stuff, too, when I yeah. was first learning, you know. Yeah. Um, but you, you as, a, as a guitar teacher, because I watched you uh, help. Uh, my daughter Maya, who's also helped on cameras, by the way, for everyone, uh, she hasn't been on the show yet, but she's starting to write songs now too. So you're probably one of one of the people that helped her uh, kind of get really into music because mm. um, she really started taking up guitar. That's cool. Uh, after you, I felt like um, as her as her dad, I, I don't know, like I needed to have someone else kind of take the lead and she would take it more seriously, mm -hmm. which she did, honestly. Like, once she was in some sort of a formal teaching environment, yeah. then she would come home and practice. If I showed her, she, I showed her a bunch of chords, it's like, it, it was like, oh, I don't want to do that. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't practice. But then as soon as she was taking lessons with you, you know, and, and yeah. maybe that's just a credit to your, uh, you know, you being a teacher. Because I've watched you do it. Yeah. And you have, you have patience, mm. which sometimes I... It's 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 funny because I talk I talk about people like I have no patience whatsoever. Oh, and I watch so, I watch somebody play guitar and I'm like, stop fucking doing yeah. that. Because maybe in your head, that's what's going on the whole time yeah. while you're teaching someone. You know, yeah. but you can't say that. You obviously. can't say that. You got obviously like, during. <laughs> yeah, because I know, like I was a beginner too. Like yeah. there's certain things that came naturally to me, but there's other things where it was just like. You, you try to play it and your hand looks ridiculous and you feel like a moron because yeah. your hands don't work right. And I always like... love new 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 guitar players watching their pinky, like oh, what yeah. their pinky does. Because your pinky is the most useless finger typically. So, dude, yeah, they always, Unless... one of the things they do, they always like, what? you're like, use your pinky. And then you can watch, I don't know if you can see my hand from, from like any of the cameras or anything. Maybe but you can close up on that. It like, they always do this pop, it, it pops. Yeah, my, well, like, my finger still, like, still does Ugh. that, like where it, it, yeah, you know, like it's either it's either back here or it <laughs> pops forward, and I'm like, that's one of the things that I I I'm like I I hate that it bothers yeah. me, but I do it too. So so do you like teaching guitar and do you enjoy kind of? Um, I had mixed feelings about all of it because <clears throat> I so I coached bands as well, um, which the coaching aspect was fun. Uh, um, for the hour and a half that you're actually there, it's really really yeah. a blast. And then this, but the, a lot of the work on the back end is like mm. you spend hours sometimes per week. Like if you're coordinating with the kids or the parents, depending on who you talk schedules to, and schedules, schedules, and if they have to borrow gear if they're playing a show, and then you have to write their set list. Which, if you don't do it at the rehearsal, which you should, but yeah. you don't always have time. It just it can turn into a lot of work. Um, so the coaching aspect was really really fun. Um, and it, it was kind of, I felt kind of the reverse with teaching, where the act of teaching was boring as all hell. Mm. But the work on the back end was really easy and really, like, kind of fun to do because I get to, like, learn songs and then yeah. go, oh, I know exactly what this song does here. Right, yeah. And then I would and then go. have them learn it. And yeah, and then it's it. really rewarding, too, to watch somebody, like, progress from I can't play a G chord to, oh, now I'm playing a full song. Mm. So like that, it is cool, but it's it takes way more time and patience yeah. teaching. It's funny too, because like I I watched um, a few like <clears throat> Matt Matt Edwards, uh, one former drummer of ours, uh, that also used to teach at the same school. We won't mention the the school just for now, but mm -hmm. yeah, unless you want to, but um, but uh, watching him direct uh, a bunch of like kids that are under. You know, I think they were under 13 at the time. Mm -hmm. So all super young kids, attention spans of under 13 years old, yeah. you know, on stage and getting them to actually do something like that. Um, and then having a band of my own and being like, it's very similar. 
when, when it's <laughs> <laughs> right because you're in a bunch of bands right it, it seems very yeah. similar the Dude. arguments that would happen with the 12 year olds yes. between each other about just the names of the song what songs to play dude it's um, so funny because like when you're in the band it seems like of course i'm gonna fight you on this because this is how i feel but when you're watching it as like an outside perspective like basically managing the band yeah you're like guys shut up <laughs> what are you talking about you're acting yeah. like you're you're, you're like, acting like so you're 12 years old yeah <laughs> like but then me and my 20 something year old bandmates get in yeah, a room I'll together do the same thing and we're all like just noodling away and playing and <laughs> no talking and yeah, no one's paying attention to what what you should be working on. Yeah, right? and you're like, and then it, it hits you in this in this like one moment, having having been a coach on the outside of it, where you go, oh my god, I am the twelve year old kid <laughs> right now. That's hilarious. So uh, so all the, I know a couple of the bands and including the the electronic uh, heavy metal band, mm. uh, our original um, original bands. Do you write um, songs for? like you specifically, uh, for any of the bands? And then uh, if you do, do you typically, like, how does that come about? Like, do you come into a session, a practice session with, like, pre almost pre-written songs? Is it? <clears throat> um, yeah. It changes every single time. Um, so, well, it's different with each band, too. With, with Checks and X's, oops. With Checks and X's, it's more so, I don't do as much of the writing. It's more... Like, uh, our drummer, whose name is also Marty, hmm. will write the majority of a song and then bring it to practice and we'll all sort of collaborate until it f turns into something that everybody likes. Hmm. And that's a long process, yeah. but it is really cool. Um, with letters, it's usually me and Nate, um, the singer, like lead singer. Hmm. Um, and do you co-write with him or is it? Both. All of the above. So it's a lot of times... So our last single that we recorded that has not been released yet um <clears throat> i wrote he he wrote the choruses i wrote most of the instrumentation and then i wrote the verses and pre-choruses on my own and sent it to him and then we sort of came together and pieced it all together um but that it's weird because so the way that i'm used to writing the way that i've grown accustomed to writing is not conducive to a band environment anymore because the way that i wrote my solo album was I wrote it and re and recorded it at the same time. Huh. So I would start the day and go, by the end of today, I'm going to have a song. And I would just start recording. And I would, I would just make up guitars on the spot <clears throat> and do scratch tracks into my into Logic. And I, I would just, I would say, okay, this is going to be the verse, copy-paste. And I, this is going to be the chorus, copy-paste that. And then I would make up a bridge on the spot. And then I would go, okay, guitars are done. Let's go do drums. And then I would track drums. Do you play? You play drums too. I play everything. Yeah, see, yeah. I wish I, I wish I played drums because that would help me. I think with my my uh, writing a little bit too, because I could probably track drums and then you know mm -hmm. write stuff in that way too. I tend to just let it like it just comes from. I don't know where the hell it comes from, but um, do you? So you sit down specifically to write a lot of the times, or is it not anymore? I did uh for that for that project. I did, and so that's how I got accustomed to it. Where I would I would like yeah I would just say. This is my writing time, <clears throat> and I'm going to have a, a product at the end of it. Do you feel like that made you a better songwriter? Like it forced you into kind of a box of like, all right, I've got to sit down, I've got to write something. Yes and no. I feel like the the deadline and the and the the limitation and the pressure. You either get something really good, or you come out of it with garbage. Yeah. Either way, you come out of it with something. But like for me, it it always it was always either really really good and i loved it or i came out of it going that was a waste of my goddamn time <laughs> <laughs> so like now i don't do that anymore i i pretty much sit down with a guitar and i just kind of noodle around until i find something and then it, it has to happen organically now i don't i don't force myself into writing sessions because mm. i i feel burned out by the end of the project if i yeah do that. interesting yeah i think that that some some effort into doing i don't know if necessarily a daily like songwriting exercise or or yes. something like that. it's definitely helpful um especially when you're first starting to song oh, yeah. right um because there's so <clears throat> much garbage i mean even now i'll write stuff and i'll just eh, that's like, yeah that's important and to I'll do though i'll spend hours working on it and the next day i'll listen to it i'm like nah, this is garbage i'm just throwing this <laughs> throwing this out like it i think it takes some of that um 
uh, that conscious effort to do it, to know like, oh, I don't have to be attached to every single thing that I do. Yes. You know, if I, I feel like it's not going to be, um, but, but then in, again, too, sometimes I'll bring something to the rest of the band. They're like, I really like that and I hate it and they all <laughs> like it. I'm like, all right, well maybe there's something to that, you know? Yeah. Um, that's, that's a good, you know, the thing about like, sorry. No, you're the good. thing about uh, <laughs> the thing about doing like those writing exercises is like they're awesome for developing your writing skills, but you have to you you can't treat them as like I can't treat them as like I'm gonna have a song. I I have to go into right. it saying like I'm gonna make something and probably get rid of it. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna make something that's temporary because then you you allow yourself to write freely because you're going it's gonna go away at the end of the day anyway, and then. Yeah. And then it ends up not going away because you're writing freely, so you like it, so you keep it. Yeah. But so it's like a, you trick your mind. Maybe like setting aside just the time to do it, you know, mm-hmm. and you, you go in there, not assuming you're going to come out with this great product at the end of it, but something that, that you know, hey, I have time. Because I found even because I write, like write, write, like books and things like that mm, too. Yeah. Um, and I found sometimes just saying I'm going to set, you know, half an hour, and I'm going to try and write a paragraph or something um, gets you into a mode of creating yes. uh, and getting like into the habit of creating. Whereas not necessarily you're going to sit down and say, I'm going to make this masterpiece, but okay, I'm going to get into the mindset of writing, mm-hmm. um, you know, during those times. D- and- it's funny. Like I, uh, it's, it's like, it's almost like I, I keep reading and, and seeing people talk about this where it's like, <clears throat> It's more of a motivational thing where they where they talk about like if you don't have the motivation to do something, just say, Okay, well, I'm just gonna do it for like two minutes. Yeah. I'm just gonna do it for two minutes. And then so what that what I, I would do this with songwriting, I think, unconsciously not uh, subconsciously would be like, I'm just gonna write one line. Like yeah. if I really wanted to be creative but I didn't have it, I would just go, I'm just gonna write one line. Yeah. And you write one line, you go, Oh, I kinda like that. Yeah. And you like and then you walk away that's another thing, is walking away from it and for me anyways it's i don't know it's like a weird sometimes it's, walking away makes it easier and your brain starts turning in the back yeah where you don't notice it and then all of a sudden something pops into your brain and you go oh okay yeah yeah i got another line cool yeah. then, sometimes i'll do that too like a lot of times in the morning when i first wake up i'll pick up the guitar i'll start writing something and then i've got this like earworm kind of mm-hmm. going around my head as i'm walking around all day too or i'm going like for instance the gym like what you said do it for like two minutes mm-hmm. like if you now do you run or do you any do any kind of like physical activity besides guitar playing and rocking and melting people's faces not since i <laughs> not since i stopped doing construction okay I was, but I like just, i think working out is the same same kind of thing it like, is you know just get to the gym get on whatever machine or thing weights you're gonna do just touch it and just do one rep or one take your first step and then all of a sudden you're there and you're doing it yeah it's like oh i i'm already doing it i might as well just do another one yeah you're like yeah "Yeah, you trick your brain into like (laughs) you don't go in you can't if you go into it thinking oh i'm gonna do this for an hour and a half yeah you're gonna go it can be (laughs) daunting yeah like i'm like especially so i used to run marathons quite a bit no. And, the, and the the worst thing you could possibly do at the beginning of a marathon is like, okay, I've got to run 26 and a half miles now. Like, because if you go into it thinking that you're already like defeating yourself mentally, you know, so you think, okay, I'm just going to, I'm just going to run mm-hmm. and, and we'll see what happens by the end of this uh, thing, you know, um, but, but same goes for like songwriting. I feel like, like you said, you write something down or you take a little snippet and then maybe it blossoms into something maybe it's it ends up being nothing you know yeah do, do you typically write you said on guitar first like you'll come down and i do now and do something yeah previously i mean yeah actually yes always almost always yes i would either start with a vocal melody or a guitar thing you start with a vocal melody occasionally yeah huh. not so much anymore at least recently but i used to do it that used to be primarily how i would write i would i would i would this is this is going back to like 2018 when i was in my first punk band and doing that kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> but I would write, I would pretty much compose the entire song in my head. Like vocal, I would start with vo- vocals and then I would, I would hear the rest of the song f- shape around that. Huh. And then I've, I've, uh, since I was, I don't know, 19 or 20, I've had a really good ear. So as soon as I find something and f- can find where it is with my vocal melody, I'm like, okay, I know exactly what chords 
to go to put over this, and I know exactly what I want yeah. the drums to do, and I know exactly what I. But. That's that. I think that's a super difficult <clears throat> thing to do as a musician. I don't know if anyone's ever told you that, <laughs> but no. as, as, all the songwriters ever I've interviewed here on, the, they always start with some kind of musical thing, typically in the background, yeah, um, and then come with lyrics or melody after the fact, and even starting with just lyrics, no melody, just actual words. Yep, um, I find it to be almost impossible. Uh, sometimes to go from lyric to music mm. as opposed to the other way around. I think it's fun. So I did this thing for a while where um, I was on TikTok back when TikTok was like first exploded mm. uh, here. And I would do this thing where I would take, and it didn't go off. So I stopped doing it and gave up because it yeah. took a lot of time. But I would take, <laughs> I would take videos of people singing, just singing or whatever. Huh. And I would go, I'm going to build that. And I would I would download their thing and then put guitar and drums and bass and piano around it and turn it into this full orchestrated thing and make up chords to it. And Interesting. Well, maybe I might have to employ you on uh, Maya's little thing there, too, that she did, because that's what she did. And I was really like I was I was actually surprised by how. You know, she, like I said, she was kind of, I think she's a little flat on the mm -hmm. key of it, but she's in key, she's in tune with herself the whole yeah. way through. And she's got a melody that she can reproduce uh, over and over and over again, which it surprised me because I've never written a song in that, that particular order? way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she wants to add instrumentation out, and I'm kind of struggling adding instrumentation after the fact. So maybe we'll, uh, yeah, bring me we'll in. do something because it's, it's pretty amazing what she actually came up with. Yeah. Um, so do, are you still on the TikToks now? No, I try not to be. I I haven't. I think it's turned into an unhealthy. Yeah. Uh, sort of like. What's your thing. favorite? What was your favorite kind of TikToks? What did you watch? Uh, I would. Did go, you do the dances, Marty? No, no, <laughs> no never. <laughs> I did. Uh, no, I was. I psyched myself into for a time using it s like strictly for like a promotional like thing. Promotional, creative. Uh, inspirational outlet, and I I put it in that box, and I would open TikTok, and I would go, "What can I make?" Hmm. And I would use it as as like a creative thing, and then um, somewhere along the way, it just like turned into this like, I don't have anything to do. I'm just gonna open this and watch for and just forty watch. five yeah. fucking minutes. Those those real like the real I, I talked about this, but the reels and the those shorts are. Uh, and I don't know what, what social media is doing to people, Dude. but I find myself getting lost sometimes in that stuff too. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm mm -hmm. like sitting here wasting yeah. like 30 minutes, like in, in you know. Yeah. On um, 15 second videos. Yeah. Just, I, don't, I don't know what's so appealing about it, you know, for, it's like, cause it, I, I get into them too. And I'm like, I don't know what, why am I watching this, Dude, <laughs> this garbage? I swear. On, it's like a drug. Know? It's like a drug. Yeah. It's crazy. Something in your brain is like the, the instant gratification. You're just like, I'm looking for something. I'm looking yeah. for. I'm looking for it. Give me something that makes me laugh or and, makes me whatever. And almost, I, I sometimes I find myself like watching things that are annoying, like that annoy me. Yeah. But I, I have no interest in it. But I'll sit there and I'll watch it. Yeah. And get angry at the fact that this exists. Yes. On it. And I wonder, do you feel that way sometimes yes. too? You'll watch something like, why does this even exist? Yeah. Why are people doing this? Yeah. And um, you, but you watch the whole <laughs> goddamn thing. Right. No, no like talent, no, no nothing going on. But one of the things that, that you did do recently that I caught on to, I think it was just on Facebook video or something you were doing mm -hmm. it. I don't know what platforms you put it across, but you were doing loop pedal yeah. stuff, which I wanted to kind of get into a little bit because um, you do it well, really well. Thank you. Um, I've gotten uh, lost in the loop pedal world uh earlier on in my like when i tried to kind of do a solo thing and that sort of stuff mm -hmm. i was like well i could use loop pedals to kind of fill out sound and and this way i don't have to worry about um you know the people managing of a band situation maybe i can get away with just doing the ed sheeran thing and, and yeah. doing that uh, but i never quite mastered it but mm -hmm. i feel like you've gotten uh your legs under that well, thank you. That um, skill. <clears throat> well, what you don't see is that for every video, I probably played that thing over and over for about four hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, because for the video specifically, like I can, if I if I go a little bit slower, I can get the same quality, but have the song come out a, a little bit longer. Mm. But for those videos specifically, I want to go fast. I want to go like immediate. I want it to be like, okay, uh, 
I have a beat. Okay, now I have a bass line. Okay, now I have a guitar part. Okay, now I have a, now I have a percussion. Now yeah. I have a shaker, whatever it is. That's that's interesting that you say that because you've you've probably thought about it then because you don't want to spend too much time on building the no. the backing loops because then it gets boring, it's boring. for the people that are watching it or it's listening boring. to it's, it or whatever. It's repetitive, and so like yeah, the the key there is like I haven't done it live yet, but I have I have shows booked. Hmm. To do oh, it, yeah, yeah, and I well, don't have three hours of material yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I started some. Speaking of seed and stone, we started a uh, like a songwriters round once a month that I'm hosting. Okay, so maybe you can come on and do a little loop pedal action. Hell there. yeah, it's super chill. Like all musicians kind of hang out there. It's like it's become like a little musician like hot spot to just hang out and stuff. And we might have to come out, have you come out maybe January or yeah february or whatever and, i'm in and have you on that yeah. so what do you think is like the hardest thing about learning the the loop pedal thing is it oh, the God. learning when to freaking stop and start <laughs> the stupid thing because that i always fuck it up and when I, i'm i've fucked it up uh i've messed it up youtube algorithm messed it up there you go so many times just practicing at home that i'm like there's no way i could go out and do this live i guarantee i'm gonna screw it up if i try and do this <laughs> like time this perfectly it's horrifying yeah but i mean i don't know it, the the hardest part was timing. Yeah. So like the thing that I redo the most isn't clicking the the pedals. It's uh it's like or or doing that. The the hardest part is getting my rhythmic timing mm. the right tempo and getting it looped to a way that it feels like it's one beat and it's tight. Right. Cuz it's really like you have to if you're not coordinated it's yeah. really, really hard. And <laughs> yeah. even if you are coordinated, it's really, really yeah, hard. Yeah, sometimes you come in just a little bit late, and then one of the loops is a little off, and then you, oh, you have to go and delete it. Yeah. You have to start it over again. But doing that live, I feel like, is such a... Um, I'm yeah. going to find out. I haven't done right, it live good. yet. Yeah. But it's... I mean, you're, you've, you're seasoned enough, I think, as a, a live performer where you're like, yeah, I could screw up a little bit. Oh, yeah. It's not going to be like... Oh, yeah. I feel like the same way now, but I don't want to get the looper pedal and do all that stuff because I'd have to buy all the... It was expensive. All that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I bought, I got the RC 600 and... Is it, it like a loop station with like loop a bunch station. of stuff? Yeah. So I have just on... So I have a whole pedal board situation going on. Hmm. Um, I have an octave pedal. I have a reverb. I have... Uh, a Mel 9, <clears throat> so that I can have some I have one. Yeah, some, some weird... strings and stuff. I have yeah. one of those too, yeah. And then, uh, so, and then my, my actual looper itself has six tracks huh. that I can layer each one like 32 times or something. I forget the amount. But I can do like 32 on each track, and I have six of them. Can you plug multiple inputs into the... Yep. Uh, so what, which have... one? What, de- what, what is the device? Um, it's a Boss RC600. Boss. What is what is uh, Ed Sheeran use? He he designed his own, right? He uses yeah, it's like called the Chewy something or other, but that's just a that's just a control pedal. So he has somebody backstage uh, running. I don't know if it's Ableton or if it's uh, I forget what the what the what the other one is, but yeah. So basically, his is just a MIDI control board, and they I program gotcha. his thing. Yeah. So that okay, your pedal here does this, your pedal here does this, and this and this and that. And I th- I'm pretty sure if I'm if my uh, if I pay attention enough, your spidey sense. I'm pretty sure he keeps an another one, not a full pedal, but like one stomp box that huh. is still con- that is that runs back to the same program, like on another part of the stage, so that he can take the mic freehand and walk over there and hit that button, and it does whatever. It might just be for show. I don't know. They have yeah. he has enough people backstage that they could just stop it if he wants yeah, it to. Yeah. What, what's What's amazing? So we we just played. Um... Uh, Photo City Music Hall. Have you played there I have, recently yeah. with the 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 video mm, wall and all that? No, that's no. So it it was a lot of fun to be able to like have those that level of production behind you. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those that don't know, there's a, a, a venue here called Photo City Music Hall in Rochester, and they've got a, a video wall, giant, very expensive. Um, sorry, I'm being told to lower my hand. Um, there's a there's a giant <laughs> there's a giant video wall that so um no but they got a giant video wall but then they have three tiers to it so there's like a thinner one and then one behind it but then they've got lights that kind of interact with it so i i designed a whole like light show slash uh video thing to go behind us and i had it 
it was very like archaic mm. designing of this stuff because uh, you can design where you have triggers based on like keyboard presses and all that sort of thing. Right. But I just had it where there was like maybe three seconds in between each song, so we just had to be live on point uh, when every every transition happened. That's you know? terrifying. Which, yeah, that away. was scary too because I break strings a lot. Do you um, play to a click? No, not live. Okay, not live, not yet. I'd l- I kind of would like to get to that point because sometimes I feel like. I've had too many energy drinks before a show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I start a song either too fast or we're a little lethargic that day and it starts slow and then it's hard to like get back to, to mm. where it is. Yeah. Um, but with the in ears, the, the system that I have there, you can add a click in the background and program it. But what I was trying to say is you don't realize how much production those big concerts, like an Ed Sheeran show, when you go there, Dude. Um, you know, we saw uh, what Elton John. At at Syracuse, did you get to see him on that like farewell tour? No, so not into him. So my keyboard player is super into him. So I got I got tickets for us and and uh, we went. Um, I think he had something like twenty semi trucks, yeah, something just full of equipment. Yeah, um, like all the people that are running it, all the lights that like there's triggers happening during the shows. They have all this stuff happening, and I watched a video recently of people watching a show like that with that big production value. Mm-hmm. And 90% of the time, their camera was actually pointed at the production versus the, like, like it was pointed at the video screens or it was yeah. pointed at the the smoke going out or whatever effects were going on. Um, and I think some of the issues, I think, with these smaller clubs now is that people are used to these huge productions yep. that, like, are visually really entertaining, and then you go to a small club and it's just a band on stage yeah. with no visual activity other than them kind of moving a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, uh, I think it's getting more and more challenging as a small band to, like, pull off a show that people really want to sit yeah. and watch. You know, I don't know if that... Yeah. that <clears throat> tangent uh went in a direction no yeah that totally <laughs> that makes sense. sense but and like I, so i've been running sound i've been like being a sound guy yeah here and there um and um <clears throat> it's weird like the thing that i have noticed which i didn't realize i noticed till right now is uh if the visuals don't line up with uh if the visuals aren't on the same caliber as the audio mm. quality there's like a weird disconnect that makes the show feel awkward yeah. with like the audience so if what you, do you mean what do you mean by that so if you have a really good audio system a really good i don't know much about like sure uh mains and subs and all that stuff i don't um whatever i just hold an ipad and yeah <laughs> right. effects yeah, faders yeah. and eq uh but so if you have a really good system and the show sounds nuts you're like i i feel like if there's not cr- good visual lighting and stuff, then the show falls flat. Mm. But if you have a bare bones show where you're in a small bar on a small stage and you only mic the kick drum and you have live amps that are kind of loud and it's just like a band on stage yeah, and you have dead ass simple lighting, it can be a good show and it huh. can feel like a good show because everything's on the same par, like yeah. level. That's, you know that's what I mean? an interesting take. Yeah. Cause I like, I've been, I've been doing, Sound at um, Mulconnery's in hmm. Fairport. I've, I don't know if I've been to Mulconnery's. I don't know if I have. It's nice. It's a nice little venue. It's a it's a bar, but like yeah. a tiny stage. Um, the room kind of packs. Hmm. There's there's kind of a lot of people there. Fairport Fairport's great for music, live yes. music. Honestly, yeah. like every time I go out there and I play, there's like people. There's people everywhere. Uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, and really that, so cool. that bar is like minimal. I when I run shows there with a full band, I pretty much only mic the kick, and then whatever. Do you have them just going things. like amps, or you mic the amps and all that sort I'll of? I'll mic. I'll mic the amps. Oh. Um, but even still, it's like. I don't know. It's still a bare bones show, and the lights don't change. They you just set it and forget it. Yeah. And the bar fills up, and people go and they hang out and they dance and they have a huh. great time. Yeah. And it's like hanging out in the back of the room, running sound. I'm like, this shouldn't be a packed bar right now, <laughs> but this band just sounds awesome, and yeah, the yeah. crowd is into it. Yeah. And it's like you know you wouldn't expect. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's a really interesting take because I I feel like our um our music either we can be super low key mm-hmm. right, and then we do 
that. We definitely pare down our our production value. We bring a little like you know one of those stick sub combo PA systems yeah. or whatever, um, and we'll do like you know the the breweries or the, the distilleries or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and those are always fun because we'll do a lot of covers. We'll get people singing along. They're usually drunk, uh, yep. that sort of thing. Uh, and then I feel like when we get into the the dive bar scene. I feel like I wonder if that's that's something that that's there. Like we're we're a tight enough band where it almost seems like you should just be noisy in those scenarios, and it never it almost never really works as well in those scenarios because we're not just a a dirty, rock, yeah. you know what I mean, <laughs> punk rock band. Yeah, and I see those bands perform at venues like that, and they they. You know, they always get a great, yeah. Yeah. Um, And so I think venue choice is probably a a super important thing. And then, and then how your, you know, your music um, fits into that venue. Yeah. Yeah. It's really weird thinking about it. Like as an adult, because when you, when I started playing, I was, you know, I was like (laughs) 17, 18 and I was just like, I want to play anywhere. Yeah. And then you get, and you're playing punk bands and you get on the stage at this bar and the sound is really like it, they got a good quality sound system, so all your mistakes come through, and yeah. you're you sound like crap, and it shows. Yeah. But or you can play it like a dive bar <clears throat> with a shitty system. But you're just loud. You but, got a good drummer. Just yeah, you know, and then making noise. And people end up. Oops. People end up into it. Huh. Uh, it's weird. Like the environment makes a huge difference, which. I don't know. Maybe that's just because our band yeah, was bad. Never, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it could have been. No, but I think like I, I, I'm, uh, you've made me think now about about venue choices because it's it's true. Like every time I'm in, if I do like a theater type of venue, those go really well. Mm-hmm. If I do um, where people are sitting and listening like intently, you know, almost on purpose, not not drinking in a bar and wanting to sing along that we do really well there Mm -hmm. uh, because our a lot of our songs are very lyrically driven and kind of story driven yep and then um like a a photo city music hall with all the effects all that production value behind it was one of the most fun they even have smoke machines that can go off timed to stuff yeah which is cool like it just shoots out that's awesome you know certainly yeah lots of fun if you haven't played there recently with that well Maybe we'll talk about doing a, a co-show there or something. Yeah, we should. Um, but uh, interesting because I'm gonna have to think about now where I'm where I'm booking a little bit more. Mm-hmm. I already do. You know, I feel like the 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 dive bars. I tend to not not do those as often. Yeah, I'm trying to get out of there. Yeah. I and mean, it's funny too. Like, if you play it, you know, depending on where you are. Like, if you're playing a bar that typically has, uh middle-aged to slightly older crowd like they want to hear fucking classic rock yeah covers loud guitars and they want to get drunk and go (laughs) jesse's girl yeah you were playing that earlier (laughs) right? (laughs) is that why you learned it no that's just a joke that i play for everybody (laughs) you want to know it's funny too so we've been we've been playing uh and, and i know we got the five minutes there but we got i've been uh Every time we've played a cover gig, because I've been doing a few more of those, I'm like, all right, I'll do some just for fun, a little extra cash or whatever. Mm-hmm. No, ma- no matter where we are or, or how many crowd-pleasing songs we play, someone always comes up and asks for a song that we don't know. Yes. By artists that we play a bunch of songs by, but that particular song we don't know. Yep. But, but no matter what, there's always one per- Can you just play this... The, uh, no, we don't know no. that. So no, <laughs> no, no like, stop asking. It's not, just, it's not just something. Although down in Nashville, they they're very good at that sort of thing too. Oh, yeah. They must learn just every cover song that's out there. Yeah. Um, but before we we run out of time here, Marty, let's do this. I want to thank again our sponsors, um, Lucky Buzz, Seed and Stone, etc., uh, for sponsoring the show. Happy holidays. I think this might come after the holiday season maybe I don't, I don't even know anymore um but um don't forget to subscribe to like to comment etc cetera, etc cetera. and i keep talking about merch and it's made um i've just got to post it and, and youtube doesn't give me the option yet but i'll uh, i got yelled at today by a former bass bass player about uh, having a uh, a facebook page for the 
the podcast too, so maybe I might start that. But oh yeah, you got to yeah, get on that. Well, the, the Facebook makes you pay for everything, so I'm like, I'm not going to start a page because you start a business. Listen, you start a, a business page for something, right? And I've done this a bunch of times, and then if you don't pay for advertising, no one sees it. So what's the point? Unless I'm going to start paying all the time for advertising, like I'm just gonna. I'm just going to do what I do, you know, and, and if people like it enough, then they'll share it. And if anyone is my friend and cares about me and Marty <laughs> and, and the, the, the people that, whose lives depend on this show. I'll see you both give your foot angry. That's right. Whose lives depend on this show. You'll like and you'll share and you'll comment uh, to help spread the word about the songwriter's couch. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> to everything he said. I, ba- I and fully back. You know what? You know I've been pretty bad about too. Though we do have a patron, patron, Patreon, not Patreon. It's called patron, patron with the web hosting or the uh, podcast hosting thing that I do. Oh, okay. That you can donate every month, and you can help keep us alive too, and help us bring up our production value even more. Maybe we can hire a lighting person uh, in the near future. Ellie's, <laughs> Ellie's like, please God, uh, hire a lighting person. Um, but Marty, what do you want to promote here real quick before we get you playing some music for us? Oh God. Um, this is the part that I'm worst at. Do you have web websites for all of the bands? Um, no, we are, we do have Facebook pages. We have Instagram pages. Um, Definitely. So I want people to check out my YouTube channel, my Instagram, um, checks and X's Instagram letters from New York, Instagram. Those are the big four. So your Instagram for you personally would be what? It's just my name, Marty Alaco. How do you spell that? M-A-R-T-Y-A-L-L-O-C-C-O. And it'll be in description. We'll put all the links and stuff down there too. So um, do you have something I know before we started here? You were contemplating what you were going to play. Have you made a decision as to what you're going to do? I yeah. think so. <laughs> it's going to have to be short because it's not done. All right, like I well, said, this is one of those ones that I just kind of sat down and it just happened for a bit. All right. Well, I love those songs. So what is it about? What's the... Uh... Oh, By the way, is that, is that the Ed Sheeran Martin? No. This I got before I even really listened to Ed Sheeran. Huh. This is just a... I mean, uh, I guess it is the one that he used. For a time before he got huge. So um, Taylor Swift made a Taylor, a mini Taylor that I got for Maya. Yeah. I love that freaking little guitar. It's like tiny like that. Yeah. Um, it's just easy to carry around, but it sounds good, and it's got the built-in Fishman and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but it says Taylor Swift across the whole thing. So Lame. I, yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Listen, I like Taylor Swift, but get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I'm sorry. What was the name of the song again? Uh, um, you going to do? I've been calling it Pendulum. Pendulum. Yeah. What is it about? If it you don't is given a little. Uh, I don't really know. It's um, I think. I j- I think that it's sort of about, like, watching a friend make bad decisions, hmm. and um. Be unsure of themselves. And feeling like you're, uh, sort of losing them and letting them fall huh. away from you. And, like, I called it Pendulum because um, it's like somebody swings back and forth between decisions, yeah. can never decide on anything. I dig it. But uh, they always, every time they swing back, they go, yeah, I'm going to do this. And then you go, well, and then you go, no, I'm going to do this. And yeah. then you're like, dude, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like, just, but then, you know, it's, so it's just about that uncertainty mm. and that kind of thing. Awesome. All right. Marty, I'll... Alaco. Alaco. There it is. See, I that was that's how I I thought of it in my head uh, too, and I I pronounced it the opposite way. Yeah, everybody does when that. It came down to the fact. That is but okay. Marty Alaco, everybody. Here's my question: If I if I fuck it up, do I get a second go? No. Okay. <laughs> it's live. We're doing it live. But if you could just point the microphone down in between your guitar and the and the vocal, and it should pick it up Hold enough. Off. Like right there. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Let's see. I also have my lyrics on my phone that I'm going to be staring also, at. Also, what are those little wood blocks on your guitar? Oh, so I installed these. Installed. I put Velcro on them, and I slapped them on here for looping, or for percussion. Ah. So, like, <laughs> if I want to do, like, little did stuff. Did you, bo- you bought those, or did you make them? I, I uh, stole this idea. This one is um, it's an incense holder. It's, part of, it's just the end of an incense holder. Hmm. And I I, uh, I did that because somebody else does that. Yeah. 
Um, but before I found this one, I, I found this. This is just a piece of cedar that right. I just had. So. And keeps the moths away, too. It does do that. <laughs> Multi-purpose. Um, okay. Well, yeah, I'll, let's hear it. I'm going to be staring at my lyrics the entire time. So this is going to go great. I've only played through this, I think, once. Let's see if I can see if I remember it. Are you so sure, so sure of your timing? How can you be so sure of anything? When you come up short, you do it without even trying. If you need reminding you are the one With time behind your eyelids Your eyes are open so wide That you wind up searching blindly You are the one Flailing in the darkness Whenever you're trying your hardest So loosen it, loosen it up Second time I've ever played that through. Marty Aloka. I love that song. That's a great that's a great riff, man. Thank you. So what are you playing there? You're going a little I think huh. that's an E something. E minor seven or some something. I mean it feels like I don't know. It's a nice progression. Yeah, it's Thanks. nice. Yeah, it feels like very natural, like where it should go. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I I sent it to the reason I the reason I actually called it pendulum was because I sent it to somebody, just the riff, no lyrics. And I just made this. And he sent, and he said, that sounds like a pendulum. <laughs> and I went, oh my God. Yeah, I, can, I can see that, yeah. Almost like a... Uh... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I really dig it. Huh. Thanks. All right, everybody. Marty Alaco. There you go. <laughs> on the podcast today episode 15 who would have thought we would have made it this far uh we started from the bottom now we're here. and now we're still at the bottom <laughs> <laughs> very much improved no we're still here. <laughs> well we got a well we got a, a neon sign now yeah that's a dope do you sign. remember do you remember how how long ago ali merry christmas thank you for doing the the podcast even though you're tired when we do it sometimes so i really appreciate it marty I appreciate you teaching my daughter how to play uh, 
guitar. She uh, was one of the students that I ri- liked. Yeah. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> there was like two of them. Guess yeah. guess who the other one was. <laughs> um, <Yeah. no. laughs> but thank you for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Dope song. We're going to have to do a show together, but secondly, I'm going to have to come out and see one of your uh, one of your sets too. Hell yeah. Uh, and uh, I'll, I'll be screaming the loudest at the front start in the mosh pit. So. Amazing. All right. And again, thank you to Seed and Stone. Uh, thank you for all you people who listen and watch and, and uh, comment. Um, you know, we really appreciate you guys. And if there's anything you'd like to see or anyone you'd like to see on the show, please let us know. And as a matter of fact, we've improved just slightly. We do have an email address. So what is it? <laughs> T P J b booking at gmail.com so if you have anyone you want to get on the show or you want to see on the show or you have any commentary that you don't really want to comment on please feel free to send it and if you want to actually book the band too you can send us an email through there too so uh that's that uh thank you all for watching episode number 15 marty thank you again brother i sure. appreciate it thanks for having uh, me. we'll have you on the show again at some point oh, soon yeah. maybe your next album or something will have you come back on yeah and, there we go and, and do something but uh see you guys on the next one and uh keep writing them songs mm-hmm.